New Orleans Saints, Wikipedia article audio. National Football League History Early History Jimmy Mora Era Mike Ditka Era Jim Hazlett Era Effect of Hurricane Katrina Sean Payton Era 2009-2011 Bounty Scandal Logos and Uniforms 2000s Stadium Rivals Divisional Rivals Atlanta Falcons Tampa Bay Buccaneers Carolina Panthers Other Rivals Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl Appearance Statistics Season-by-season season records Record versus opponents Single-game records Single-season records Career records Notable players Old Gold, Black, White Pro Football Hall of Famers Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame League Championships Pro Bowl Players Super Bowl MVPs Conference Championships Division Championships Temporary Stadiums in 2005 due to the effects of Hurricane Katrina The New Orleans Saints are a professional American football team based in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Saints currently compete in the National Football League as a member of the league's National Football Conference South Division. The team was founded by John W. Meckham Jr., David Dixon, and the City of New Orleans. The Saints began play in Tulane Stadium in 1967. The name Saints is an allusion to November 1st being All Saints Day in the Catholic faith. New Orleans' large Catholic population, and the spiritual when the saints go marching in, which is strongly associated with New Orleans and often sung by fans at games. The franchise was founded on November 1, 1966. The team's primary colors are old gold and black, their logo is a simplified fleur de lis. They played their home games in Tulane Stadium through the 1974 NFL season. The following year, they moved to the new Louisiana Superdome. For most of their first 20 years, the Saints were barely competitive, only getting to .500 twice. In 1987, they finished 12-3 their first ever winning season and qualified for the NFL playoffs for the first time in franchise history, but lost to the Minnesota Vikings 44-10. The next season of 1988 ended with a 10-6 record, but no playoff berth. In the 2000 season, the Saints defeated the defending Super Bowl champion St. Louis Rams 31-28 to notch their first ever playoff win. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans and much of the Gulf Coast region. The Superdome was used as an emergency temporary shelter for displaced residents. The stadium suffered damage from the hurricane, and from lack of available facilities. The Saints were forced to play their first scheduled home game against the New York Giants at Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Other home games were rescheduled at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, or Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. During the season, it was rumored that Saints owner Tom Benson might deem the Superdome unusable and seek to legally void his contract and relocate the team to San Antonio, where he has business interests. Ultimately, however, 
the Superdome was repaired and renovated in time for the 2006 season at an estimated cost of 185 million US dollars. The New Orleans Saints' first post-Katrina home game was an emotionally charged Monday night football game versus their division rival, the Atlanta Falcons. The Saints, under rookie head coach Sean Payton and new quarterback Drew Brees, defeated the Falcons 23-3, and went on to notch the second playoff win in franchise history. The 2009 season was a historic one for the Saints. Winning a franchise record 13 games, they qualified for Super Bowl XLIV and defeated the AFC champion Indianapolis Colts 31-17. To date, it is the only Super Bowl championship that they have won, and as it is the only Super Bowl the Saints have appeared in, they join the New York Jets and Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the only three NFL teams to win their lone Super Bowl appearance. Over the course of 50 seasons, the Saints have compiled an overall record of 345-436-5, with a regular season record of 338-427-5 and a playoff record of 810. First, the brainchild of local sports entrepreneur Dave Dixon who later built the Louisiana Superdome and founded the USFL, the Saints were actually secretly born in a backroom deal brought about by U.S. Congressman Hale Boggs, U.S. Senator Russell Long, and NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle. The NFL needed congressional approval of the proposed AFL-NFL merger. Dixon and a local civic group had been seeking an NFL franchise for over five years and had hosted record crowds for NFL exhibition games. To seal the merger, Roselle arrived in New Orleans within a week, and announced on November 1, 1966, that the NFL officially had awarded the city of New Orleans an NFL franchise. The team was named for the great jazz song most identified with New Orleans when the Saints go marching in, and it was no coincidence that the franchise's official birth was announced on November 1, which is the Catholic All Saints Day. When the deal was reached a week earlier, Dixon strongly suggested to Roselle that the announcement be delayed until then. Dixon told an interviewer that he even cleared the name with New Orleans Archbishop Philip M. Hannon, he thought it would be a good idea. He had an idea the team was going to need all the help it could get. Boggs' congressional committee in turn quickly approved the NFL merger. John W. Meckham Jr., a young oil man from Houston, became the team's first majority stockholder. The team's colors, black and gold, symbolized both Meckham's and New Orleans' strong ties to the oil industry. Trumpeter Al Hurt was part owner of the team, and his rendition of When the Saints Go Marching In was made the official fight song. That first season started with a 94-yard opening kickoff return for a touchdown by John Gilliam but the Saints lost that game 27-13 to the Los Angeles Rams at Tulane Stadium. It was one of the few highlights of a season that ultimately saw the Saints finish 3-11, which set an NFL record for most wins by an expansion team. For most of their first 20 years, the Saints were the definition of NFL futility. They would not finish as high as second in their division until 1979. The 1979 and 1983 teams were the only ones to even finish at .500 until 1987. One of the franchise's early bright moments came on November 8, 1970, when Tom Dempsey kicked an NFL record-breaking 63-yard field goal to defeat the Detroit Lions by a score of 19-17 in the final seconds of the game. The record was not broken until 2013 by Matt Prater of the Denver Broncos. In 1980, the Saints lost their first 14 games 
prompting local sportscaster Bernard Buddy D. Deliberto to advise Saints supporters to wear paper bags over their heads at the team's home games, many bags rendered the club's name as the Aints rather than the Saints. Former Saints owner Tom Benson acquired the franchise in 1985, and hired Jim Finks as general manager and Jim Mora as head coach. That combination provided the Saints with their first ever winning record and playoff appearance, going 12-3 in 1987, which had one fewer game than normal due to a player's strike. Another playoff berth would follow in 1991, and the club's first division title came in 1991. During Mora's tenure, the Saints made the playoffs four times with teams marked by strong defenses led by the Dome Patrol linebacking core, but they were never able to win a playoff game. Mora coached the Saints until the middle of the 1996 season, when he stepped down halfway through the 3-13 season. His 93 wins were three more than the Saints won in their entire history prior to his arrival, and would remain the most for any Saints coach until 2016. After the end of the 1996 season, ironically as Deliberto had suggested before Mora's resignation, former Chicago Bears coach Mike Ditka was hired to replace Mora. Although this initially generated a lot of excitement among Saints fans, Ditka's tenure ended up being a failure. The Saints went 6-10 in their first two seasons under Ditka. During the 1999 NFL Draft, Ditka traded all of his picks for that season, as well as the first round and third round picks for the following season, to the Washington Redskins in order to draft University of Texas Heisman Trophy running back Ricky Williams in the first round. Ditka and Williams had a mock wedding picture taken to commemorate the occasion. However, Ditka, most of his coaching staff, and general manager Bill Kaharik were fired at the end of the 1999 season due to the club's 3-13 record. Jim Hazlett held the post from 2000 to 2005. In his first year, he took the team to the 2000 playoffs and defeated the defending Super Bowl champion St. Louis Rams for the team's first ever playoff win. The team lost the following week to the Minnesota Vikings. After winning the 2000 NFL Executive of the Year award, General Manager Randy Mueller was fired between the 2001 and 2002 seasons without explanation by Benson. The Saints failed to make the playoffs in 2001 and 2002, although in the latter year they had the distinction of beating the eventual Super Bowl XXXVII champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers in both of their regular season meetings, only the second team to do so in NFL history. In 2003, the Saints again missed the playoffs after finishing 8-8. The 2004 season started poorly for the Saints, as they went 2-4 through their first six games and 4-8 through their first 12 games. At that point Hazlitt's job appeared to be in jeopardy, however, he managed to win the three straight games leading up to the season finale, leaving the Saints in playoff contention in the final week of the season. In Week 17, the Saints defeated division rivals Carolina, however, the Saints needed other results to break their way and win the St. Louis Rams beat the New York Jets The Saints were eliminated despite having beaten the Rams, who finished with the same record. The Rams, Saints, and Vikings all were 8-8, with the Rams having a 7-5 conference record, Saints 6-6, and the Vikings 5-7. The Rams received the number one wild card due to having the best conference record out of the three, followed by the Vikings due to the 38 31 loss handed to the Saints in Week 6. Hazlitt was fired after the 2005 season, 
in which the Saints finished 3-13 and did not play any regular season games in New Orleans due to Hurricane Katrina. Due to the damage Hurricane Katrina caused to the Superdome and the New Orleans area, the Saints scheduled 2005 home opener against the New York Giants was moved to Giants Stadium. The remainder of their 2005 home games were split between the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas and LSUS Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On January 17, 2006, the Saints hired Sean Payton as their new head coach. 2006 Season On March 23, the Saints announced that the team's two 2006 preseason games were to be played at Shreveport, Louisiana, and Jackson, Mississippi. After a $185 million renovation of the historic stadium, on April 6 the Saints released their 2006 schedule, with all home games scheduled to be played at the Superdome. On September 19, Saints owner Tom Benson announced that the team had sold out the Louisiana Superdome for the entire season with season tickets alone, a first in franchise history. The September 25, 2006 home opener, the first home game in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, was won by the Saints 23-3 against the Atlanta Falcons who were undefeated in the 2006 season at that time. The attendance for the game was a sellout crowd of 70,003. Meanwhile, the broadcast of the game was ESPN's highest ever rated program to date, with an 11.8 rating, and viewership by 10,850,000 homes. It was the most watched program for the night, broadcast, or cable and was the second-highest-rated cable program of all time at the time. Green Day and U2 performed Wake Me Up When September Ends and The Saints Are Coming, respectively, before the game. The game received a 2007 Aspy Award for Best Moment in Sports. The game is remembered by Saints fans for Steve Gleason's blocked punt on the opening series that resulted in a touchdown for New Orleans. On December 17, 2006, the Saints clinched their third division title and their first NFC South title in franchise history. For the first time in Saints history, they clinched their NFC South title on their home field. Sean Payton became the second consecutive Saints coach to win a division title in his first season. After the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Dallas Cowboys 23-7 on Christmas Day 2006, the Saints clinched a first-round playoff by for the first time in franchise history. After the first-round bye, the Saints beat the Philadelphia Eagles 27-24 in the Superdome in the 2006 Divisional Playoffs. No team had ever had such a poor record in the prior year and then gone on to a league or conference championship game since the 1999 ST. Louis Rams who advanced to win their first Super Bowl after being 4-12 the season before. Since the Saints' only previous playoff win was in the wild card round, this was the farthest the Saints had ever advanced at the time. The victory was only the second playoff win in team history. The season ended on January 21, 2007, when the Saints lost 39-14 to the Chicago Bears in the NFC Championship game. 2007 Season Eastern Conference, Capital Division, Century Division Retired Numbers Ring of Honor 45th Anniversary Team New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame Coaches Current Staff Joe Gemelli Fleur Alyssa Ward Current Roster Cheerleaders
Radio and Television Notes Super Bowl Championships, 2009 NFC, 2009 NFC West, 1991, 2000 NFC South, 2006, 2009 2011, 2017 Tiger Stadium, Alamodome, Giants Stadium QB Drew Brees, Archie Manning, FB Tony Baker, RB Deuce McAllister, Dalton Hilliard, Ruben Mays, George Rogers, Chuck Muncie, Andy Livingston, Mark Ingram Jr., Alvin Kamara, LT Jamal Brown, William Rofe, German Bushrod, LG Brad Edelman, Jake Cup, Carl Nix, Ben Grubbs, Larry Warford, C. Leck Alls Bentley, Joel Hilgenberg, Jonathan Goodwin, R.G. Yari Evans, R.T. John Stinchcomb, T. Hobie Brenner, Henry Childs, Jimmy Graham, W.R. Joe Horn, Eric Martin, Wes Chandler, Michael Thomas, DeWill Smith, Joe Johnson, Wayne Martin, Ronaldo Turnbull, Bruce Clark, Cameron Jordan, DT LaRoi Glover, LB Jonathan Vilma, Mark Fields, Keith Mitchell, Sam Mills, Von Johnson, Pat Swilling, Ricky Jackson, Ronaldo Turnbull, CB Tyrone Hughes, Benny Thompson, Dave Waymer, Dave Witzel, Marshawn Lattimore, SS Roman Harper, Sammy Knight, Tom Myers, FS Darren Sharper, K. Morton Anderson, Tom Dempsey P. Mitch Berger, Brian Hansen, Thomas Morstead. W.R. Eric Martin Asterisk, W.R. Joe Horn Asterisk, C. John Hill Asterisk, G. Jim Dombrowski Asterisk, G. Yari Evans Asterisk, O. T. Willie Rofe Asterisk, O. T. Stan Brock Asterisk, T. Hobie Brenner Asterisk, Q. B. Drew Brees Asterisk, R. B. Dalton Hilliard Asterisk, R. B. Deuce McAllister. K. Morton Anderson Asterisk P. Tommy Barnhart, S. T. Fred McAfee Asterisk, K. R. Slash P. R. Michael Lewis Asterisk. De Wayne Martin, De Jim Wilkes, De Joe Johnson Asterisk, De Will Smith, L. B. Sam Mills Asterisk, L. B. Von Johnson Asterisk, L. B. Ricky Jackson Asterisk, L. B. Pat Swilling Asterisk. C.B. Dave Waymer Asterisk, C.B. Mike McKenzie S. Tommy Myers S. Sammy Knight Sean Payton 33 Trey Edmonds, 22 Mark Ingram Jr., 41 Alvin Kamara, 36 Daniel Losco, 27 Jonathan Williams 85 Dan Arnold, 80 Austin Carr, 19 Ted Ginn Jr. PR, 11 Tom Miley Lewis, 83 Willie Sneed 4, 13 Michael Thomas. The Saints announced that for the second year in a row, the Louisiana Superdome had sold out every ticket for the season. Additionally, all luxury boxes had been sold out for the season. Both of these statistics are particularly surprising given that the city proper has about 300,000 people or 150,000 fewer people than July 2005 population data. The first game of the season was against the defending Super Bowl XLI champion Indianapolis Colts. The Saints lost this game, 41-10, and lost their next three games. In one of these three games, against the Tennessee Titans, the Saints lost running back Deuce McAllister for the season with his second career ACL tier. After winning their first game, against the Seattle Seahawks, two weeks later, 
the team went on a four-game winning streak to bring their record to an even 4-4. After reaching 7-7, the Saints lost their final two games to finish 7-9. 2008 Season Following a disappointing 7-9 record in the 2007 season, the Saints ended the 2008 season 8-8. Failing to qualify for the postseason for the second straight year, the Saints found themselves struggling on defense. However, the Saints would match the explosive offense they had in the 2006 season. Drew Brees ended the 2008 season just 16 yards short of beating Dan Marino's single season record of 5,084 total passing yards and receiver Lance Moore came 72 yards short of his first 1,000-yard season. 2009 Season, First Super Bowl Championship The 2009 season was the team's most successful season, which culminated in the franchise's first league championship win against the Indianapolis Colts in Super Bowl XLIV. After achieving a record of 13-0 with their win over the Atlanta Falcons, it marked the Saints' best start to a season in its franchise history. The result clinched an NFC playoff berth, a bye in the first round of the playoffs. By winning their first 13 games, the Saints also set the record for the longest undefeated season opening by an NFC team since the AFL-NFL merger surpassing the previous record held by the 1985 Chicago Bears. However, they would fall victim to the Dallas Cowboys in Week 14, going on to end the season with a three-game losing streak. Saints became the first team to win a Super Bowl after losing its last three regular season games. Although its opponents would include winners of nine of the last 15 NFL MVP awards, the team advanced to the 2009 NFC Championship game where they defeated the Minnesota Vikings, led by Brett Favre, 31-28 in overtime, earning their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. Television ratings for Super Bowl XLIV were the highest for any TV program, sports, or otherwise, in history, as their successful bid to win the Super Bowl was seen by many to represent the city's resurgence after the devastating Hurricane Katrina. 2010 Season The Saints' 2010 season began in the Superdome as the defending Super Bowl champions defeated the Minnesota Vikings 14-9, in a rematch of the 2009 NFC Championship game. It was played on Thursday, September 9, 2010 and televised on NBC, making it the first time the Saints have opened the NFL season at home. On Sunday, August 8, 2010, NBC announced the televised opening festivities of the evening would begin with Taylor Swift and Dave Matthews Band. On December 27, 2010, with a 17-14 win against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta the Saints clinched a playoff appearance. This marked the first time a team in the NFC South had made back-to-back -back playoff appearances since the division was formed in 2002. The Saints would face the Seattle Seahawks for the wild card opener at Quest Field. The Seahawks were the first NFL team to capture their division with a sub.500 regular season record. Drew Brees completed a postseason record 39 passes for 404 yards and two touchdowns. Despite throwing 60 passes and hindered by a lack of depth at running back, last year's Super Bowl MVP was not intercepted and rallied the Saints within 34-30 in the fourth quarter. In the end, his efforts were negated by a defense that could not get enough stops and a late touchdown run by Marshawn Lynch breaking over a half dozen tackles with 3.22 left which helped the Seahawks defeat the Saints 41-36.
2011 season. The Saints began their season with a loss against the Green Bay Packers, but the team rebounded for the next four weeks to bring their record to 4-1. A loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers brought the record to 4-2, but the team bounced back with a 62-7 blowout win against the struggling Indianapolis Colts. A surprise loss to the St. Louis Rams resulted in the record dropping to 5-3. In the next seven weeks the Saints beat talented teams such as the eventual Super Bowl XLVI champion New York Giants, Detroit Lions and Atlanta Falcons, bringing their season record to 12-3. To cap off the season, quarterback Drew Brees broke the single-season passing record held for over 25 years on the way to a Saints division winning game. The Saints won the NFC South title on December 26 and ended the 2011 season as the third seed in the NFC. They finished with a 13-3 record, beating Carolina 45-17 and also giving running back Darren Sproles the record for most all-purpose yards in a single season. The team broke numerous records that year including most yards in a season, completion percentage, yards passing, completions and more. The New Orleans Saints beat the Detroit Lions in the 2011 NFC Wild Card Playoff Game 45-28. New Orleans also tied the NFL's postseason mark for team first downs in a game and broke the record for total yards with 626, eclipsing the yardage record set 49 years ago. The Saints lost Saturday, January 14, 2012 in the divisional round in the playoffs against the San Francisco 4-9 ERS in Candlestick Park. A game that was considered an instant classic by many as the game saw numerous lead changes in the final four minutes of play. 2012 season, Payton suspended, punishment for Bounty Gate. After an off-season dominated by news of the Bounty scandal and the year-long suspension of head coach Sean Payton, the Saints sought to refocus on football and produce yet another winning year. Instead, the team, led by offensive line coach Aaron Cromer for its first six games, started the season with four straight losses and a last-place spot in the NFC South. The team finally broke through with a win in Week 5, against the San Diego Chargers, a game that also saw quarterback Drew Brees break Johnny Unitas's long-standing record for consecutive games with a touchdown pass. After their scheduled bye, the Saints went on to win four of their next five games, to bring their record to an even 5-5. Joe Vitt returned after his six-game suspension to serve as interim head coach for the rest of the season. The team failed to hold its momentum, however, and lost the next three games, including a loss at Atlanta that also marked the end of Bree's record touchdown streak after 54 games, and a 52-27 blowout loss to the Giants that dropped the Saints to 5-8. Despite winning two of their last three games, and Bree's again leading the league with 5,177 passing yards, the team finished tied for last in the NFC South, at 7-9. The Saints' defense allowed 7,042 yards, setting an NFL record. 2013 season 82 Kobe Fleener, 45 Garrett Griffin, 89 Josh Hill, 84 Michael Humanawanui, 95 Tyler Davison DT, 96 Woodrow Hamilton DT, 91 Trey Hendrickson D. 90 George Johnson Day, 94 Cameron Jordan Day, 68 Devaro Lawrence DT, 70 Mitchell Lowen Day, 97 Al Quadin Muhammad Day, 57 Alex Okafor Day, 93 David and Yemita DT, 98 Sheldon Rankins DT. 
31 Chris Banjo FS, 48 Von Bell SS, Dash Kurt Coleman FS, 20 Ken Crawley CB, 34 Justin Hardy CB, 23 Marshawn Lattimore CB, 37 Arthur Mollett CB, Dash Patrick Robinson CB, 43 Marcus Williams FS, 26 PJ Williams CB, 3 Will Lutz K, 6 Thomas Morstead P, 49 Zach Wood LS, 66 Jack Allen C, 40 Delvin Bro CB, 16 Brandon Coleman WR, 58 Kasim Edbley OLB, 55 Jonathan Freeney MLB, 80 Clay Harbor TE, 92 John Hughes Day, 29 John Kuhn FB, 61 Josh Lurie Buse G, 42 Zach Line FB, 56 Michael Modi OLB, 24 Sterling Moore CB, 58 David Perry DT, 86 John Phillips TE, 32 Kenny Vaccaro SS. The Saints finished their 2013 preseason 3-1, and won their first five regular season games against the Atlanta Falcons, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Arizona Cardinals, Miami Dolphins, and Chicago Bears. The Saints under Sean Payton had been winless in Chicago's Soldier Field and had not won in the Windy City since 2000. The Saints fared well against Chicago, Arizona, and Miami, winning 26-18, 31-7 and 38-17 respectively, but needed a fourth down shutdown and a last-minute field goal to escape Atlanta and Tampa Bay. The Saints went on a 5-0 win streak, but were stopped short by the New England Patriots in Week 6, losing 30-27 with the touchdown pass by Tom Brady in the last five seconds of the game. New Orleans would go undefeated at home for the second straight season with Sean Payton as the head coach, but finish just 3-5 on the road. Key losses included a 7-34 blowout against the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football in Seattle which cost them home field advantage throughout the playoffs a 16-27 upset against the ST. Lewis Rams in ST. Lewis which led to the Saints needing to win their next game against Carolina to control their own playoff destiny, and a heartbreaking 13-17 defeat to their division rival the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte who went on to win the NFC South. The Saints finished the season with an 11-5 record and earned a wild-card berth as the sixth seed in the NFC. On January 4, 2014, the Saints recorded their first road playoff win in franchise history over the Philadelphia Eagles 26-24. On January 11, the Saints lost to the number one seed Seattle Seahawks once again in Seattle 15-23. The weather conditions were very poor, which gave the offense much difficulty. Despite the conditions, the defense of the Saints played well, holding Seattle to just 23 over the 34 points allowed against Seattle during the regular season. 2014 Season The Saints finished the season 7-9 second in their division behind the 7-8-1 Carolina Panthers. They missed out on the playoffs after being defeated 14-30 by their divisional rival, the Atlanta Falcons, in the second-to-last week of the season. This season was notorious in Saints history for having the 31st worst-ranked defense in the league which is one of the main reasons for the Saints' poor 2014 campaign. The only two great performances by the defense out of the entire season came from a 44-23 home win against the Green Bay Packers and a 31-15 victory against the Chicago Bears in Chicago. 2015 Season The Saints finished with a 7-9 record for the second consecutive season. 
They were third in the NFC South after the 15-1 NFC champions Carolina Panthers and the 8-8 Atlanta Falcons. Their defense was historically bad. They allowed the most passing touchdowns in a season in NFL history as they allowed 45, effectively making them the worst passing defense in NFL history. They also set the NFL record in opposing passer rating while finishing last in points allowed and yards allowed per play. Atrocious play by defensive captain Brandon Browner, who set the NFL record for most penalties with 23, did not help the struggling Saints defense. Defensive coordinator Rob Ryan was fired near the halfway point in the season and was replaced by senior defensive assistant Dennis Allen. The Saints had strong play from their 2015 draft class. The Saints' first pick Andrus Pete started at right tackle and left guard at certain points in the season, and other first-round pick Stephon Anthony finished his rookie season with 112 tackles, one sack, one interception, and two forced fumbles. He had two scores both coming against the Carolina Panthers and led all rookies in tackles. Second round pick Howley Kakeha had four sacks. Canadian football star Delvin Bro, who was signed in the offseason, led the Saints' struggling secondary with three interceptions and 19 pass deflections. Drew Brees also tied the NFL record for touchdown passes in a game with seven coming against the New York Giants. After a lengthy investigation conducted by the National Football League's Security Department, the league alleged on March 2, 2012, that 22-27 defensive players on the New Orleans Saints maintained a pay-for-performance program that included bounty payments administered by defensive coordinator Greg Williams during the 2009, 2010 and 2011 seasons. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell stated, the payments here are particularly troubling because they involved not just payments for performance, but also for injuring opposing players. The report also found that head coach Sean Payton was aware of the allegations but failed to stop the program. The league also said that Mickey Loomis, the Saints' general manager, was directed to end the program by owner Tom Benson, but did not. The memo released to NFL teams found Payton and Loomis guilty of conduct detrimental to the league. On March 3, 2012, Benson addressed the bounty payments controversy on the Saints' website, stating, I have been made aware of the NFL's findings relative to the bounty rule and how it relates to our club. I have offered and the NFL has received our full cooperation in their investigation. While the findings may be troubling, we look forward to putting this behind us and winning more championships in the future for our fans. On March 21, 2012, Commissioner Goodell announced that, as a result of the bounty scandal and the NFL's investigation, Sean Payton has been suspended for one year, Greg Williams indefinitely, and Mickey Loomis for the first eight regular season games. The team was also fined $500,000 and docked second-round draft picks in 2012 and 2013. Saints assistant coach Joe Vitt also was suspended six games and fined $100,000. Payton's suspension started on April 1, 2012, and all the suspensions are without pay. Goodell will meet with Williams again after the 2012 season to determine the coach's status. On May 2, 2012, it was announced that four players who played for the team between 2009 and 2011 would receive suspensions for their alleged participation in Bounty Gate, Saints linebacker Jonathan Vilma, Saints defensive lineman Will Smith. 
former Saints slash retired linebacker Scott Fujita, and former Saints slash current Packers defensive lineman Anthony Hargrove. Most of the players who were the targets of questionable hits by the Saints, including Favre and Warner, claimed the bounties were merely part of the game. However, several former players interviewed by Sports Illustrated said that while payments for good hits and sacks were indeed considered part of the game, bounties for intentionally injuring opponents violated an unwritten code. However, on July 26, 2012, Jonathan Vilma and seven witnesses from the Saints testified in front of a federal judge in New Orleans that NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell got his facts wrong in the bounty scandal. Everybody was sworn in under oath in front of a judge with the risk of perjury and jail time if we were lying, and categorically denied there was a bounty, Vilma said in a text message to ESPN's Ed Werder. Seven people testified. Two sworn affidavits all saying the same thing. I ask that you and ESPN report the facts. No more bias or BS or hearsay. I gave you facts that you can report if so choose. Tulane University Sports Law Program Director Gabe Feldman said, Clearly the judge, by her questions, indicated she thinks Goodell overstepped his authority and this case was always going to be about if he executed his power fairly. The NFL's retort is that with all due deference, you don't get to second guess. Judges only have limited jurisdiction over arbitration issues. Saints All-Pro quarterback Drew Brees made a controversial tweet on June 20, 2012, stating, if NFL fans were told there were weapons of mass destruction enough times, they'd believe it. But what happens when you don't find any? Breeze immediately issued another statement to clarify, My WMD comment has nothing to do with politics or our brave military. Merely an analogy to show how media influences public perception. He went on to say, I apologize if the WMD comment offended anyone. Especially our military. There is no one I respect more than our servicemen and women. On March 15, 2018, the Saints owner Tom Benson died from flu at the age of 90 after he was hospitalized on February 16, 2018. Benson's wife Gail Benson will succeed him as Saints and NBA's New Orleans Pelicans owner. Black, along with old gold and white, has always been one of the team colors, but it was not the first choice of original majority owner John W. Meckham Jr. His preference was for Meckham Blue, a medium shade which was used by all of his other investments. The NFL office however, informed him that his proposed combination too closely resembled that worn by the San Diego Chargers. Although the Chargers were members of the AFL, the older league did not want to offend its soon-to-be partners so soon after the merger. Meckham settled on black as the primary color as a nod to his financial involvement in the petroleum industry. Black gold is a term synonymous with oil. Although the Pittsburgh Steelers who played a few home games in New Orleans during their early years to avoid conflict with the Pittsburgh Panthers football team have long used black and gold as their colors, their shade of gold more closely resembles yellow, making the Saints black and gold compatible with the rest of the NFL. Except for minor modifications, the Saints logo and uniforms have basically remained the same since the club debuted in 1967. The team's logo is a fleur de lis, while its uniform design consists of gold helmets, gold pants, and either black or white jerseys. Minor changes to the uniform stripes and trim have been made throughout the years. The team wore black helmets during the 1969 preseason 
but NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle barred the Saints from using the helmets during the regular season, since Mecham did not notify the league office of the change. The Saints predominantly wore white at home when the club played at Tulane Stadium from 1967 through 1974, forcing opponents to suffer in their darker jerseys in the subtropical climate of New Orleans. When the surface at Tulane Stadium switched from natural grass to poly turf in 1971, field temperatures became hotter still. In Archie Manning's first game, in the 1971 season opener against the Los Angeles Rams, temperatures on the field reached as high as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The heavily favored Rams wilted in the stifling heat and the Saints claimed their first ever victory over their NFC West rivals, 24-20, on Manning's one-yard quarterback sneak on the last play of the game. The Saints switched to white pants in 1975, coinciding with the team's move from Tulane Stadium to the Superdome, and have worn white at home numerous times since then. One year later, they started to wear black pants with their white jerseys, a move influenced by coach Hank Stram, who introduced red pants to the Kansas City Chiefs uniforms in 1968. In an October 3, 1976 home game against the Houston Oilers, Hank Stram used the Saints Road uniforms, the white jerseys and black pants. The Saints lost that game 31-26. During the 1981-82 seasons, the team wore white jerseys with black pants at home, but reverted to the black jerseys and white pants for 1983. They reverted to wearing gold pants with both their black and white jerseys in 1986 under new coach Jimmy Mora. From 1986 through 1995, the sleeves of the jerseys and sides of the pants featured a logo with a fleur de lis inside an outline of the state of Louisiana. The logo replaced the striping pattern that had been on the uniforms since the team's inception, save for color variations, the striping pattern was similar to that used by the Washington Redskins, Green Bay Packers, and Cleveland Browns, which is likely why the change was made. That logo was removed in 1996 and replaced with a fleur de lis on both the sleeves and sides of the pants. From 1996 through 1998, the Saints returned to gold numbers on both the white and black jerseys, but complaints about the numbers on the white jerseys being too difficult to read forced the numbers on the white jerseys to be changed to black in 1999. The Saints wore black pants with a white gold stripe with their white jerseys in 1999, but following a 3-13 season and the dismissal of coach Mike Ditka, the black pants were mothballed by new coach Jim Hazlett. In 2000, the Saints won their first playoff game as they hosted the St. Louis Rams, and after having a better road record than home record, they wore their white jerseys, and won 31-28 over the defending champion Rams. The defining play of the game came with the Saints clinging to a three-point lead with minutes to play. The Saints punted to the Rams' Azizahir Hakim, who fumbled the punt deep in Rams' territory. Brian Milne recovered for the Saints, who then ran out the clock to preserve the victory. In 2001, they wore their white jerseys in the first six home games. During that same year, they primarily wore black pants with both their white and black jerseys. They became the first NFL team to wear all black uniforms in a Week 5 road game against the Carolina Panthers, and again in Weeks 16 and 17 in home games against the Washington Redskins and San Francisco 49 ERS, the Saints were outscored 78-10 in the final two contests to end a 7-9 campaign. In 2002, 
the saints wore black pants with their white jerseys, and gold pants with their black jerseys, a gold alternate jersey, and a 1967-style throwback uniform, complete with an accurate 1967-era helmet which featured a larger fleur de lis, a darker shade of gold and grey face masks. But one season later, they stopped using the alternates and again reverted to wearing gold pants with both their black and white jerseys. The team introduced a gold alternate jersey during a December 15, 2002 game versus the Minnesota Vikings, a 32-31 loss, but have never worn them since then. Because of the metallic gold's bright color, the gold jerseys were considered the light jersey in the game, so the Vikings wore their purple home jerseys as the dark-colored team. One team must wear dark and one team must wear light, this was done because of black and white TV broadcasts so viewers could tell the teams apart. The only exception being if both teams are wearing throwback uniforms, such as Thanksgiving Classic Games. From 2003 through 2007, the New England Patriots had a light jersey that is not white in which the other team would wear their colored, or dark jerseys against them since the third jersey rule was implemented in the NFL in 2002. The Saints also introduced a 1967-style throwback uniform in a 23-20 win on December 1, 2002 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This uniform was not worn again until a 40-33 win against the Houston Texans on September 25, 2011, and also on November 6, 2011, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a 27-16 Saints win. However, the 2011 throwbacks use the current helmet, meaning the shades of gold on the helmet and jersey do not match. In 2006, to honor their return to Louisiana, the Saints wore a patch on their uniforms with an outline of the state of Louisiana with a fleur de lis superimposed, similar to the logo from the 1980s. The Saints originally planned to wear white jerseys at home for the 2006 season, but during the season, the players voted to wear the black jerseys at home after the second game. Since the team had informed the NFL office that they planned to wear white jerseys at home, each of the Saints' remaining home opponents would have to agree to New Orleans' request. The Atlanta Falcons, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Cincinnati Bengals did not agree to the switch, forcing the Saints to wear white jerseys for those games. Starting in week 13 of the 2006 season, the Saints wore black pants with the black jerseys against the San Francisco 49 ERS, and in a week 16 game in the Meadowlands against the New York Giants, the Saints wore the black pants with their road white jerseys. The Saints later stuck with the black pants in their 2006 playoff run. Since 2008, the Saints have worn white jerseys at home for preseason games and early regular season home games. In 2009, the Saints wore the black pants only once, beating St. Louis 28-23. They wore the white jerseys slash gold pants combination during the Super Bowl XLIV victory over the Indianapolis Colts. In 2012, the Saints wore black pants 12 times and wore gold pants 4 times. In 2013, gold pants were used only 7 times. The Mercedes Superdome is the Saints' home stadium. It has a listed seating capacity of 76,468 or 73,208. The Saints own a perfect record there against the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars, but a winless one against the Baltimore Ravens. The Saints' oldest rival are the Atlanta Falcons. 
The Falcons lead the rivalry series 49-45. The two clubs joined the NFL within a year of each other as expansion teams and have played each other twice a season since the Saints joined the league in 1967. The Saints have a developing rivalry with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have been part of the NFC South with the Saints since 2002. The teams actually played each other quite often as non-division rivals. Between 1977 and 2001, there were only five years in which the teams did not play. This includes 12 years in a row from 1981 to 1992 all as a result of the scheduling formulas in place prior to 2002. The Saints won 13 of 20 games as non-division opponents. Since becoming division rivals, the Saints have the edge in the series, winning 16 games to the Bucks 10. One notable pre-division game is a 1977 matchup that resulted in Tampa Bay's first win in franchise history coming against New Orleans after previously starting out 0-26 overall. The Saints and the Carolina Panthers have been minor rivals since Carolina joined the league as an expansion franchise in 1995. The teams have been divisional rivals since then, originally in the NFC West and then in the NFC South since 2002. This series has been extremely close. As of the end of the 2017 regular season Carolina leads 24-23. Carolina defeated New Orleans on the road every year from 2002 to 2008, a streak of seven seasons. Notable games include Carolina's 197 home victory in 1996 that sparked Saints head coach Jim Mora's infamous Diddley POO rant and resignation from the team, Carolina's 10-6 win in the 2002 season finale at the Superdome to knock the Saints out of the playoffs, and the emotional 2005 season opener at Carolina where the Saints won 23-20 in the face of Hurricane Katrina and an eventual 3-13 season. After the bounty scandal broke, it was revealed that the Saints had deliberately targeted Panthers rookie quarterback Kem Newton. In their last game in the 2014 NFL season, a fight between the players broke out in the end zone and spilled out into the tunnel entrance after a Cam Newton touchdown, with Panthers tight end Brandon Williams getting ejected and both teams receiving offsetting penalties. The Panthers won the contest 41-10, with early turnovers by the Saints being a factor in the blowout. On January 7, 2018 the two teams met in the NFL playoffs for the first time. The Saints beat Carolina, 31-26, in the wild card round thus eliminating Carolina. The New Orleans Saints rivalry with NFC counterparts Dallas Cowboys is more of a regional rivalry rather than a divisional one as the two franchises have never competed in the same division since the last time both clubs were in the same division, in 1969, as a part of the NFL Capital Division, before the AFL-NFL merger in 1970. Their fan bases overlap in parts of northern Louisiana, such as the Shreveport Bossier City metropolitan area which borders the state of Texas. The teams have played each other 28 times, with New Orleans owning the recent series winning 8 out of the last 10 games. The Saints have won 4 of the last 5 meetings in Dallas, with a 2-1 record at Cowboys Stadium. The all-time series record stands at 12-16, in favor of Dallas. The two teams most recently met on October 4, 2015, which the Saints won 26-20 in overtime in New Orleans. In the team's most recent meeting at the Superdome, 
the Saints set a National Football League record of 40 first downs and a franchise record of 625 yards of total offense with Texas native Drew Brees throwing four touchdown passes without any interceptions for the 15th time in his career. Additionally, the Saints' defensive coordinator was Rob Ryan, who had been let go by the Cowboys earlier that year and Ryan's replacement Monty Kiffin was demoted from the position at the end of the 2013 season. Note, W equals wins, L equals losses, T equals ties. The Saints were designated as the home team for this game. Until the selection of Ricky Jackson in 2010, there had been no players in the Hall of Fame who earned their credentials primarily as Saints, the others were chosen for their work with previous teams. However, Jim Fink's tenure as Saints general manager was a significant factor in his selection. When offensive tackle Willie Rofe was selected in 2012, he became the second Saint to earn his Hall of Fame credentials mostly while in New Orleans. Rofe was a member of the NFL's all-decade team of the 90s. The following Saints players have been named to at least one Pro Bowl. On October 9, 2013, the Saints announced the creation of a Ring of Honor to commemorate former players, administrators, and individuals with significant contributions to the franchise. Their names are displayed along the Mercedes Superdome's terrace-level fascia. The first three honorees were Archie Manning, Ricky Jackson and Willie Rofe and were officially inducted during halftime of the Saints game against the Dallas Cowboys on November 10, 2013. To commemorate the club's 45th anniversary, the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame selected its all 45th anniversary team. The Hall of Fame updates its all-time team every five years, and this latest squad of head coach and players features four standouts from the club's roster at the time of selection, QB Drew Brees, G.R.E. Evans, and a Will Smith as well as head coach Sean Payton. The players are chosen in a vote by the Hall of Fame Media Selection Committee, which includes local and regional media members who cover the Saints now or did so in the past. The all 45th anniversary team is as follows, with an asterisk designating those players who have already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Offense Specialists Defense Coach Asterisk Unanimous Selection One 2005 induction ceremonies postponed to October 27, 2006, due to Hurricane Katrina. Note, statistics are correct through the 2017 NFL season. Coaching Staff, Management, More NFL Staffs the Joe Gemelli Florida Liss Award Award is given yearly to a person who has contributed to the betterment of the New Orleans Saints organization. The award is named for Joe Gemelli, a New Orleans clothing store owner and an active supporter of sports in the city, who was known as the team's biggest fan. Running backs Wide receivers Tight ends Defensive linemen Defensive backs Special teams Unrestricted FAS Roster updated March 17, 2018, Depth Chart Transactions, 59 Active, 17 Inactive, 15 FAS The Saintsations are the cheerleading squad for the Saints. A cheerleading squad has existed since the franchise's founding but the current name was only adopted in 1987. The Saints' flagship station is WWL, 
one of the oldest radio stations in the city of New Orleans and one of the nation's most powerful as a clear channel station with 50,000 watts of power. Jim Henderson is the play-by-play -play announcer, with former Saints running back Deuce McAllister as color commentator. McAllister succeeded another former Saints running back, Hokey Gajan, in the role after Gajan's death on April 11, 2016, from liposarcoma. Henderson has been the play-by-play -play announcer for Saints radio broadcasts continuously since 1993, and previously held the position from 1986-89. Previous color commentators include former Saints players Archie Manning and Stan Brock. Most preseason games are televised by WVUE, a station which has been owned by a consortium led by Saints owner Tom Benson since mid-2008, and, as the Fox affiliate for New Orleans, carries the majority of Saints games. Both stations also carry a heavy complement of coach and player shows. Tim Brando and John Stinchcomb call the preseason games for the Saints. Saints preseason games were previously produced by Cox Sports Television. Beginning in the 2015 season, owing to Raycom Media's management of the station on behalf of Tom Benson's ownership group, production of preseason telecasts were taken over by Raycom Sports under a new multi-year deal, and syndicated to Raycom stations and others around the team's footprint. Regular season games are aired on WWL-TV, the local CBS station whenever they host an AFC opponent and NBC affiliate WDSU via Sunday Night Football.